everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video we are going to be talking about the different ways that you can use crystals within witchcraft and magical practice. really really popular. I'm sure a lot of us have noticed that crystals are popping up everywhere. Left, right, wherever it might be, you can find some crystals. And a lot of people will buy crystals but they won't actually know what to do with them. So crystals come in lots of different shapes and sizes, very large expensive pieces to very small tumble stones. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can use crystals within your magical workings, within your religious practice, and also just within day-to-day -day life to utilize their energy and properties to assist in manifesting your desired outcome. Now, of course, not everyone that buys crystals is going to be interested in actually using them. But a lot of people might be interested in using crystals for their energetic properties, but don't quite know what to do with them. So instead, they end up sitting on a shelf or in a cupboard or in a bowl and they never get touched ever again. A lot of the time people will buy them and then they just won't know what to do with them. And so they end up just sitting around never to see the light of day ever again. And I think that's such a shame. I think it's such a beautiful thing that comes from the earth. And if we have bought them, we may as well utilize them to our best advantage. So crystals are very, very popular, especially nowadays, crystals are popping up everywhere. And a lot of people will buy crystals and they won't know what to do with them. A lot of beginner witches and just witches and practitioners of magic in general will buy a lot of crystals. And maybe we don't utilize them to their fullest advantage. So today I wanted to share with you just some of the ways that you can use your crystals to assist in manifesting your desired outcomes and just assisting your day-to-day -day life. Now, of course, crystals don't have to have a purpose. They are exceptionally beautiful in and of themselves, and so a lot of people do use them to decorate spaces and to just act as beautiful pieces. But especially as magical practitioners, there are a lot of things that we can do with crystals that can definitely help improve our magical practice. So if you have crystals lying around that you've bought and you just don't know what to do with, stick around for the rest of the video as I go through just some of the ways that I personally use crystals to help manifest my desired outcomes. Now crystals do come in a lot of shapes and sizes. Some of them are very large, some of them are very small. And so it's really entirely up to you which of the things I'm going to be talking about that you can add into your own practice because some things are not going to be suitable for very large crystals, but they might be suitable for very small crystals. So definitely apply these as and when you want to with the crystals that you have available to you. So the first thing that you can do with your crystals is that you can use them as charms. Now this is probably one of the most popular ways to use crystals and it's something that I see a lot of people doing. So the idea behind a charm is that it is an object that has energy and association already attached to it. And by utilizing these items, these crystals as charms in our day-to-day -day life, we draw on that energy and it manifests in our life. So what a lot of people will do is that they will buy cage necklaces, crystal cages, where they will then add in a tumble stone that represents what they want to manifest in their life into the necklace and then they will wear it around on a day-to-day -day basis. You might find people putting crystals in bras. That's a very popular thing that's happening at the moment. It's all over Tumblr, it's all over Instagram, the idea of people walking around with crystals in their bras. I've done it myself. It's a very effective way of carrying stuff around. Women's clothing doesn't have enough pockets. I think we can all agree, it just doesn't have enough pockets. So a lot of people do carry tumble stones and small crystals around in pockets and also in bras um, so that they can assist in manifesting that desired intention as they go about their day. Now what a lot of people will do is they will cleanse the crystals beforehand. They will then program them with energy. So to program them with energy, you cleanse out anything that's going to interfere with what you want to achieve, and then you choose a stone that matches what you want to manifest. 
The only exception to this is clear quartz because clear quartz is a very highly adaptable stone and you can essentially program it for anything. You then charge the crystal with your energy and your intention. You essentially tell it what you want it to assist in your life. And then you can then carry it around with you in necklaces, in bras, in pockets, whatever it might be. Some people also carry them around in little pouches that they then keep in their handbag or their backpack. Some people put them in wallets. Citrine is exceptionally popular for this. A lot of people will put citrine in their wallet to help attract money. And the basic idea of this is that like attracts like. So if you have a citrine crystal, which is a crystal of abundance, prosperity and good fortune, and you put it in your wallet, you are attracting prosperity, money and good fortune into your financial situation. So a lot of people will carry around crystals for confidence like tiger eye or carnelian when they want to feel that within themselves. They might carry around um, garnet if they want to attract love or lodestones for that purpose. So the idea being is that you carry around what it is you want to manifest or what it is you want to achieve within yourself. Now this is probably the simplest way of using crystals and is probably one of the most popular. And it does make great use of the tumble stones that you can buy relatively cheaply. I'm sure if anyone has gone to a museum or they've gone to a mind, body and spirit show or an occult shop, you will have found hundreds of tumble stones and a lot of people will buy them and they won't know what to do with them. And this is an option for what you can do with them. So the next way that you can use crystals, particularly small crystals, is to use them under pillows as charms while you're sleeping. So it's a slightly different option to carrying them round with you during the day. Instead, you can sleep with them under your pillow at night. After all, we do spend many, many hours of our lives sleeping, or at least trying to sleep. And so a really good way of utilizing crystals is to keep them around us when we are sleeping to help influence us during our time of rest. So if you don't want to carry crystals around during the day because you aren't able to or you don't feel comfortable or you've got nowhere to put them, you don't want someone finding them, if you are in a position where you can use crystals at night, keeping crystals around you as you're sleeping is a really good way of assisting in manifesting that energy within your day-to-day -day life. Because we do spend a lot of time sleeping, it's actually a scarily large amount of time that we spend just lying which is just really weird for me to think about. We just lie there pretending to sleep and then we just lie there motionless for five to eight hours <laughs> and then we wake up again. It's just such a strange concept, but we can utilize this time to help manifest our intentions. So some people will create sleep pillows or dream pillows that they will put underneath their pillowcase containing herbs and crystals which can help manifest things within their life or to assist in lucid dreaming or sleep magics. Some people put them on bedside tables, some people will just put straight up crystals inside their pillowcase on the other side, not the side you're sleeping on, that would get really uncomfortable. Or they'll actually attach crystals in little bags onto bed frames or they'll find drilled crystals to attach on bed frames. It's a really great way of utilizing the time that we're essentially not doing anything to help manifest our intentions without having to carry crystals around with us all the time. Now if you do want to carry crystals around with you all the time and also are free to wear crystals very obviously, a really great way of utilizing crystals is to have them in jewelry. Now as I've mentioned, you can buy jewelry that allows you to put a tumble stone inside a crystal cage and carry it around, but you can also buy crystal jewelry, crystal rings, crystal earrings. There are a lot of companies that sell real crystal jewelry that you can then utilize in your magical practice. A lot of you guys will have seen all of the rings that I usually wear that I'm weirdly not wearing today. I get these rings from Shop Dixie and they use real crystals in their jewellery most of the time. I think there's a few pieces that aren't natural crystals but what I will do is I will charge these crystals, I will program them with my intention and then I will wear them throughout the day. I do this with necklaces, as you guys know I've got a lot of crystal necklaces, I've got a lot of crystal rings and so 
if you are free to wear crystal jewellery and you don't have to worry about people calling you out for it or you get uncomfortable by it, you can utilise these crystal pieces that are exceptionally popular and trendy now and you can actually utilise them to manifest your desired intention. It's a great way of being both stylish if you like the style of wearing crystal jewellery and also really, really practical. And especially if you can find clear quartz jewellery, that's great so that you can just program them for absolutely anything. So if you cleanse them before you program them, you can then just keep energizing that crystal jewelry and you can just keep manifesting the effects that you want to achieve just by wearing your jewelry on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a great way of utilizing crystals and if you already have crystal jewelry because it's really popular at the moment, it's a great way of both wearing them and getting something manifested out of it. Now something that you will have seen me do a lot on this channel is utilise crystals in spell work and ritual. Now I have quite a lot of crystals. I've got a giant chalice that's just full of crystals. In fact, I probably need to find somewhere bigger to store all my crystals. But I really enjoy using them in spell work and ritual. And if you have tumble stones, if you've got crystal chips, if you've got crystal shards or points just lying around that you don't know what to do with, and you're already doing spell work and ritual, it could be worth trying to add those crystals into that working. Now there's lots of different ways you can do this and it really all depends on how disposable your crystals are to you. Now let me explain that a little bit more. So by adding crystals into spell work, you can add their energy into that working. You program them as you would if you were going to create a charm from them and instead of using it as a standalone item, you instead add it into spell work and ritual adding that extra energy, that extra intention and the association of the crystal into that working. It adds an extra layer of intention in that can really help manifest successful, powerful working. So you can do this in lots and lots of ways. You can just have them around the working while you're doing it. So if you want to be doing a working for self-love, around that candle working or around that spell work, whatever it is that you're doing, you could have some rhodonite, you can have some rose quartz there present, adding their energy into that working. And then once you're done, you can remove those crystals, cleanse them and put them back in your collection. If you want something a little bit more long term with those crystals, you can create spell pouches or mojo bags or sachets. You've seen me do it with other spell work on this channel where I'll actually take everything from the working and I'll add it into a bag or I'll create a bag from scratch and in there will be crystals as well as herbs and other items of association and you can then add them into that spell pouch that you can then work with consistently for a long period of time. You can even take it a step further. You can create long-term spell jars, such as sweetening jars, honey jars, um, and you can actually add crystals into that jar. Now, these types of workings are often very long-term. And you're not losing the crystal permanently, but you are kind of sacrificing it into the container of whatever it is you are choosing to use. So especially with honey jars, I'll often add in rose quartz into a honey jar and it will sit in that honey for months and months and months. So you've got to be careful with this one. If you're going to be putting your crystals in a liquid and you actually want them to still be there at the end of it, you're going to want to be very specific on which crystals you choose. So nothing that's going to dissolve, nothing that's going to leach toxins into the liquid. No, be very careful with what you choose. But it is an option that you can actually add that energy and the intention into a long-term or a short-term spell work, depending on how you want to use your crystals. So if you only have a few crystals, you might not want to sacrifice your rose quartz for months and months on end. But if you're like me and you have a rather large collection and you have lots of different pieces of a crystal, you can then include them in much longer term spell work to really add that energy and the intention of that crystal into that working. 
So another big way that people use crystals is using them as altar pieces. Now, not only do they look beautiful, they can also be exceptionally useful. So this also applies to larger pieces, and it's one of my favorite things to do with bigger pieces, like the towers, the flames, the free forms, whatever it might be. I really like using them as altar pieces. Now, as most people know, there are lots of different types of altars. They don't just have to be very ceremonial. Ceremonial. They can be very intention based. And so, on each different type of altar, you might be using crystals differently. So, if you are going to be creating a meditation altar, you might want crystals around that have a very gentle, soft energy that's going to assist in entering you into a meditative state. So, you might choose crystals accordingly to help put you in that state. If it is a deity altar or a spirit altar, you might want to put crystals on there to represent the energy of that deity, that spirit, that um, energy that you're working with. And they can also be given as offerings if you wanted to, to the deity, to the spirit, whatever it might be that you're working with. A lot of people will add crystals onto an altar to help represent the deity that they are working with. So I do this with my Bridget altar, I also do this with my Coridwan altar. They have very different crystals on them to represent the very different deities that they are. Now you can also do this on manifestation altars. So this is a really great way of using crystals. It's probably one of my favorite ways is that on a manifestation altar, you want to add in all of the things that represent the goal that you want to manifest. So if you want to manifest money, on that altar, you're gonna have a lot of green and gold. You might want to have coins, you might want to have some magical money on there, green candles, gold candles. You might want some pyrite or fool's gold. You might want some um, citrine and some green and some green aventurine to add in that good luck and money. You're gonna want pictures of money. You might want a card from the pentacle suits on there as well, everything to represent money. The idea being that like attracts like. And so in this instance, you can pick different crystals out of your collection that represent what it is you want to achieve and add them onto this altar as extra energy and extra intention. They aren't gone forever, they're still sitting there and they're still very beautiful, but they then have a practical application that can really help manifest things in your life. It's one of my favorite ways of working with crystals. I will do this for confidence working, self-love workings, romance workings, money workings, whatever it might be. So if you can find the associations for each crystal in terms of what it represents, they are great things to add onto altars. And if you do have a collection of tumble stones, it's also a really affordable way of adding crystals into a working without having to use large pieces. Now, depending on the size of crystal that you have, you might find that some of them are really useful for becoming magical tools. Not just items that you use, but actual objects that you can utilize as physical items like wands. Now some crystals you can buy in point form and these can be exceptionally useful as wands in spell work and ritual to assist in directing energy. Now I use crystal wands myself along with many others and a lot of people will enter into witchcraft and magic and think that a wand has to be made of wood when in fact a wand can really be made out of anything that can direct energy and crystal is exceptionally good at directing energy. Now if you do have these crystal points like this one here for instance, you can utilize them as a wand, as a director for energy. This is particularly good if you are very closely connected to crystals, you will be able to use these really, really well. Now the idea being is that you use them just like any other wand. You push your energy in to them with your intention and they then focus that energy out through the point at the top into whatever it is that you're working with. That could be for casting a circle, that could be for enchanting an item, that could be for adding energy into a specific area of your working, whatever it might be. If you have crystal points like this, or you have crystal towers, you can really utilize them as wands if you are drawn to crystals. So that's a really good option. It saves crystals like this from just sitting on a shelf and never being used. Instead, you can utilize them as a practical item in your spell work and rituals and if you have different crystal wands 
and different crystal points, you can utilize the energy of the crystal within the specific working that you're doing. So if you have a rose quartz point, you can use that in love and self-love workings. If you have a green aventurine point, you can use that in money and good fortune workings. It kind of adds that energy in whilst also being a really practical tool. So another way that you can use a crystal as a magical tool is to use them for scrying. Now, most commonly scrying is done with crystal balls or it's used with crystal sheets or crystal bowls. But you can realistically do scrying with any size crystal, but the smaller the crystal, the harder it is. Now, scrying is a whole topic in its own right and it's way too big of a topic for me to talk about in this video, but it is essentially a tool for entering into the subconscious to gain answers and insight from your subconscious mind and your psychic intuition that you might not be able to get just from day to day life. Essentially you stare into the crystal, usually in a dim lighted environment, you enter into a trance like state and from that you might see images, you might see aspects of intentions inside the crystal itself and then you can draw on that, utilising your own abilities to see what that means within your life or within your potential future. It's a whole big topic, it's really really interesting and if you do have a lot of crystals, especially the crystal balls or crystal sheets if you have any things like obsidian sheets. I know most people are not going to have obsidian sheets but you never know, there might be someone out there that has just a sheet of obsidian and they don't know what to do with it. You can really look into scrying and see if that can be of any help to you. It is a really interesting magical practice that not that many people know or talk about so it's definitely something that's worth looking into if you do have crystal sheets, crystal bowls or crystal balls which is the most common thing to find. Now crystals can also be utilized as an assistant to medicinal healing. Now I want to make it very very clear that when people use crystals for healing it should always be done alongside normal medicinal means. I am never ever going to advertise crystal healing as the cure-all instead of medicine because it's simply not the case. They are wonderful to work alongside medicine and that is the instance that I'm going to be talking about in this video. Some people will utilize crystals to assist in healing. I've done this myself. When I have headaches, I use clear quartz. And I know a lot of crystal healers, a lot of crystal therapists, that will utilize crystal energies for people who want assistance alongside either mental health assistance or medical health assistance. And it's a really unusual form of healing that I think is really fascinating to look into. It deals with the different vibrational properties of crystals and I think it's a really interesting thing so if you're interested in medicinal healing and you have a lot of crystals it could be worth studying up on it and see if it's something that you would be interested in learning about further. It's certainly a really interesting topic, it's a little bit controversial but if it's something you could be interested in it might be something useful for you to use alongside medicine. I can't emphasize that enough because I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments about it. I mean alongside medicine, not instead of. But it definitely is a really nice addition to your life and if you feel as though it could help you, even just mentally, to kind of prepare to feel better, then I think it's definitely something to look into if you're interested. Now if you are a reader, so a psychic reader, a tarot reader, a rune reader, whatever it might be, you might find crystals to be really useful to work with alongside your readings. A lot of people will use crystals alongside their divination tools for lots of different reasons. One of the main ones is to help protect their divination tools from interfering energies. So if you go to an MBS fair or you go to a reader in person, you might find that their deck of cards is sitting underneath a crystal. Often it's a clear quartz or a black obsidian or a black tourmaline. And these crystals are used to shield the cards from any interfering energy. So once the practitioner has cleansed the cards, they then just have to protect them from any interfering energy. And they don't have to constantly keep disrupting the cards by cleansing them repeatedly. 
So you'll find a lot of readers will utilize crystals to protect their magical tools, whether that be runes, pendulums, oracle cards, Lenormand, tarot, whatever it might be. Crystals may also be used to help amplify the psychic energy of the space. This is often done by mediums, but also by readers, and they will include crystals around them that help to amplify that divinatory energy. So that could be clear quartz because it is an amplifying crystal. That could be rainbow moonstone or labradorite as they have properties that allow you to much more easily tap into the subconscious and also the psychic. And so a lot of people will have labradorite on their tables, on their cards, around them. They might be wearing it to help amplify the psychic energy to help receive better readings or better interactions from energies and spirits. So it's definitely something to look into if you do have crystals lying around, see how your readings respond to having crystals around you. You might find that having crystals around will impact a reading, it might improve it, it might change the way your readings come out, so it's definitely worth playing around with if you are a reader of any kind and you also have crystals. See how your readings respond to using crystals and you might find that you can come up with a good combination that really, really helps your readings. Now the last thing that I'm going to be talking about is crystal infused water or crystal infusions. Now a lot of people will have crystal water bottles. I have these myself, they're becoming more and more popular and I really really like using them. Although they are a bit of a pain in the ass to clean. But they are really really cool items that are really really useful but you don't just have to use infused water to drink. Now essentially the basis behind infused water is the idea that having crystals around water will add their energy into that water and so when you are drinking or when you are using that water you are then taking on that energy from the crystals within yourself or within the working. Now I want to say a massive disclaimer here, if you are going to be consuming water that is crystal infused please 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 always use professionally made methods or do it safely. Never put crystals straight in your water please don't do it. Crystals, just because they're natural, doesn't mean they're safe. A lot of crystals will leach lead, they will leach aluminium, they will leach toxins into the water that you do not want to drink. So a lot of the time you'll find that the professionally made crystal bottles, the crystals never actually come in contact with the water. Instead they are sat inside a little crystal dome or a little crystal point where they're actually sealed inside that little compartment so the water doesn't touch the crystals and that's how they can do this without toxins being leached into the water. So you may find that you can find water bottles with malachite sitting inside a little dome but I would never ever go near a water bottle that had crystals just loose inside the bottle because that just isn't safe. But the idea of having these little domes or these towers with the crystals in it is that they can energetically interact with the water and so you then get that energy within your life. And they're a really interesting way of utilising crystals. I really like using crystal water bottles, they are just a pain in the ass to clean. I really really struggle with cleaning them and I need to find a better way of doing it. But you don't have to buy the really expensive crystal water bottles if you don't want to. You don't even have to drink the water if you don't want to. You can use crystal infusions within your magical practice. Now there are a couple of ways of doing this. If you aren't going to be drinking the water, you can put crystals inside the water that you want to infuse or the oil that you want to infuse. That's another option as well. And if you aren't going to be putting that oil on your skin and you're not going to be drinking the water, you can put crystals inside. But I wouldn't necessarily do that. A good way of doing it is to have a dish that the crystals go in and then a container inside that dish that has the water or has the oil in it. And that way you are infusing that bottle, that glass of water or oil or whatever it is with the crystal energy without the crystals actually sitting in the liquid. And that's a great way of adding that into workings. So if you know you want to be doing a self-love bath, you can infuse some water or you can infuse some bath oil or whatever it might be by surrounding it with rose quartz or rhodonite or something similar like that. 
And then when you're running your bath, you can add in the rose petals and you can then tip in this infused liquid, whatever it might be, to assist in manifesting self-love within your life. It's a really interesting way of using crystals that I don't think enough people um, kind of think about or do and it's something I really like doing. I do this with oils, I do this with water, I have the water bottles. I really enjoy using crystals in this way because one, it doesn't damage the crystals if you aren't putting them in the liquid directly. It also allows you to reuse the crystals frequently. So if you're putting them into spell work, you might have to wait several weeks or months before you get your crystal back. In this one, you infuse it for three to six hours longer if you're doing an oil, for instance. Um, and then your crystal you can take back and you can use them somewhere else. It's a really interesting way of doing it and it makes it really versatile. It gives you the option for oils and baths and for drinking. And as long as you're doing it safely, it's a really great thing to do. Massive, massive disclaimer though, please never ever put crystals directly in your water. You don't know what imperfections there might be. You don't know what impurities they might be. You might not know how they're gonna interact with the water. So please never drink anything that has crystals just sitting in it. Because a lot of people believe that crystals, because they're natural, they are safe and they are definitely not. There are lots of crystals out there that leach lead and that is definitely not something that you want to drink. So please, please, always be careful with your crystals and don't let pets or children eat them. Please, I know sometimes they can look really tempting, but just keep, keep them away from the edge of the shelf if you're gonna put them on a shelf. So that is just a few of the different ways that you can use crystals within your magical practice. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a like. It really, really means so much to me. If you have any other ways that you use your crystals, feel free to put them down in the comment section. I would love to read them. I'm sure lots of other people would love to read them. And it's a really great way to kind of get conversations started and to share ideas, which is absolutely fantastic. Big, big news for anyone that's interested. I listened to you guys on the last live stream and there is now a Discord server. It's just called Hearthwitch. There is a link down in the description box where you can come and hang out with us. There's now about 60, 70 members and we're all just chatting away. There's lots of different categories. It's a fun time. I really enjoy the Discord server, so feel free to join if you're interested. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just wanna chit chat with the community down in the comment section, feel free to post a comment. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try to post videos every Wednesday and Saturday at 6 p.m. I'm struggling a little bit at the moment, don't tell anyone, um, but hopefully soon I'll be back on track. So thank you guys so much for watching. It really, really means so much to me and I will see you in the next video.